It seems that after the great balloon turkey shoot of last month that the Russians have decided to get in on the action as well. On the 14th of March at around 8am local time, a United States Air Force MQ-9 Reaper drone had to crash land in the Black Sea after being bodily struck on the propeller by a Russian Air Force Su-27 fighter. The MQ-9 was destroyed by the incident and the Sukhoi reportedly made it safely back to Crimea. The Reaper was apparently operating in international airspace when it was intercepted by the Sukhois. The Su-27s then proceeded to dump fuel onto the drone several times before one of them hit the aircraft's prop, causing its subsequent crash. In a statement on the incident, US Air Force General James B. Hecker, commander of US Air Forces in Europe and Africa, said that Our MQ-9 aircraft was conducting routine operations in international airspace when it was intercepted and hit by a Russian aircraft, resulting in a crash and complete loss of the MQ-9. In fact, this unsafe and unprofessional act by the Russians nearly caused both aircraft to crash. US and Allied aircraft will continue to operate in international airspace and we call on the Russians to conduct themselves professionally and safely. In contrast, the Russians state that the MQ-9 was flying near the Crimean Peninsula and, quote, violating the boundaries of the area of the temporary regime for the use of airspace established for the purpose of conducting a special military operation communicated to all users of international airspace and published in accordance with international standards. As a result of sharp manoeuvring, the MQ-9 unmanned aerial vehicle went into an uncontrolled flight with a loss of altitude and collided with the water surface. The Russian fighters did not use airborne weapons, did not come into contact with the unmanned aerial vehicle and returned safely to the home airfield. So a classic case of he said, she says, pretty standard in these sorts of incidents. Since the incident, there has been a lot of ink spilt about whether it was a deliberate action or not, and no doubt a lot more shall be. So I might as well weigh in with my two cents. Obviously, fighter jocks getting up close and personal during an interception is hardly a new thing. We have the famous case of the Su-27s zipping in front of the nose of a B-52 back in 2020. And then there was the tragic incident when a Chinese Navy J-8 hit an American EP-3 in 2001, resulting in the death of the fighter pilot and creating a major international incident. But in this case, there can be little doubt that the Russian aircraft was deliberately trying to down the drone, whichever side story is correct. Obviously, no one in their right mind tries to bring down an aircraft by hitting their propeller with their own aircraft. That is the definition of how to get unexpected outcomes. But the actions of the Sukhoi pilots, whether by dumping fuel onto the MQ-9, as stated in the USAF version, or by using hard manoeuvres, as according to the Russians, were intended to down the MQ-9. Both actions seek to choke the airflow into the drone's engine, a way to down the Reaper without resorting to weapons. I mean, it might seem like a silly distinction, but let's be honest, if they shot it down outright, there would be a lot more at stake. The Reaper was likely, along with the host of other aircraft constantly flying in the area, engaged on intelligence gathering on Russian forces engaged in the war in Ukraine. In fact, the incident probably best demonstrates the big pro and con of using unmanned aircraft like the Reaper for these sorts of roles. Had a manned intelligence aircraft been used, the interceptors would have been far more cautious about their response and how they acted around the aircraft. But an unmanned aircraft is far more likely to be prosecuted aggressively, as happened here. Likewise, using a UAV might make the operator push the boundaries of what is acceptable in the target's eyes, because there are no lives at stake on the operator's part. And in fact, because of this, I suspect the whole thing will blow over pretty quickly, as no lives were lost and the constant dance of Allied intel assets over the Black Sea was not interrupted by the event. But I also suspect we will see more of these sorts of actions and losses occur as UAVs take a greater and greater part in the intel gathering role 